This program is brought to you in part by Sal Cal Real Estate Connections. Yes, welcome to Race in Action Today talk series. As we hear today with some special guests, and as you, I can't tell you how pleased I am and excited to have our radio talk show icon <laughs> number one icon icon <laughs> icon a lot of people to get the job <laughs> and of course he is our member of our foursome threesome yep the do the telescope view tv series and all kind of charity events throughout the state the dynamic and personable steve parker Steve, and my favorite Martian, too. I can't forget that. Steve, pleasure to have you here tonight. Nice to see you. And uh, I see you're, you're, me, you're still doing the radio show. Yeah, you know, I'm really lucky, Larry. You know, I, got to do, I get to do this uh, radio show on WTIC on Saturday mornings, 5.30 until 8.30. And people, you know what they ask me? They go, are you on every Saturday? And I go on, I was on last Saturday. Because <laughs> it's a business where you really don't know if you're doing your last show because they never have to, they don't have to warn you. They don't have to say, you know, they don't have, you know, yeah. how HR has to tell you all the, yeah. no, they could just go, you know, you did a good job today. Uh, we're going sports next Saturday, but thanks for your help. Oh, wow. So um, that and the, my real blessing, my boss, the big boss, his name's Steve Salhaney. He watches over Connecticut and Boston and everything. He always says to me, my wife and I love to sleep in on Saturday mornings. <laughs> and I go, <laughs> if he sleeps until 9 o'clock, I'm safe. <laughs> now tell me, how long have you been doing that show? Um, about 11 and a half years. Oh, wow. Yep. wow. And I never, uh, I never really thought we would do it more than I I know many times I've been at events <clears throat> and the subject will come up Saturday morning radio show. And you're the guy, let me tell you. There's not much else out yeah, there, Larry. And, and, and you do such a great job, number one. And the people, Steve, you help. Because I could, I mean, I just can't say enough about mains in motion and uh, people like that. I mean, and, uh, you know, these poor people that have problems with domestic trouble. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it's on and on and on. Yep. How, how do you do all this? Well, you know, the funny thing is the way these things happen. First of all, I'm not a Bible thumper. I'm not, you know, preaching the good word all the time. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, there aren't any coincidences in life. And all of this came together for me uh, when a great broadcaster, Arnold Dean, Arnold had passed away. I knew Arnold for a long, long time. My dad knew Arnold Dean. Yep. So um, I was coming out of Arnold Dean's wake in Rocky Hill, and I, it was the end of the night, and only his family was left in there with Arnold. And then the head of CBS for Hartford is walking in the door as I'm walking out. And she goes, don't you think you should do something for us? <laughs> I said, what? You should do something for us. So she told me who to call, the big boss, and I said, can I use your name? She goes, oh yeah, because she's the big, big boss. And then he's called up and I said, Suzanne thinks I should do something for you. <laughs> and there was complete silence on the other end. Yeah. And I said, and don't you love phone calls like yeah. this? Because here's the big <laughs> boss telling the yeah. boss yeah. there, yeah. you better talk to him about doing something. And years later, what I found out was, she said to me, I saw this same woman again years later, Suzanne. And she goes, you want to know how I knew about your family's history in Hartford Radio? I said, oh, she goes, Arnold Dean told me about it. Oh. So the fact that it was Arnold Dean's wake mm -hmm. and she came in while I was leaving and that opportunity happened then. So I always tell people it's not necessarily the talent. It was, it was the right place at the right time. But oh, also yeah. they, knew I they knew that I wouldn't be a threat. They wanted somebody who could fill in for Ray Dunaway on Saturdays every now and then because Ray works six days a week. So every now and then they wanted to let him have a Saturday off. They knew that I wasn't going to be one of those loud talk show hosts, you yeah, know, political yeah. pains in the butt. They knew that I was community oriented because I had done television for community. I'd done Channel 8 and Channel 30. Yeah. Um, 
I grew up uh, in, in the business in this area, in this market. And also years ago on WPOP, when they went news talk, I did a whole community show on there. So to me, it was always about what's happening in the area around you. And the guests that we have on the show, I pretty much, unless you tell me about somebody or something, I usually pick out my own guests. And I try to find people that are kind of interesting to talk to. And I always say, that's how I find them. You if know, I like the person, I want to talk to you them. Know, and that's how it happens. You know, people always ask me, you know, how do you know who to ask or who to talk to? I say, you know oh, yeah. when you talk to them. Yep. <laughs> it's about their, what their capabilities are. Yep. You know, and not everybody has that talent to know that, you know. And I have to say, you've had countless people oh. on the air, you know. Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's really been a blessing because they're, I really, again, it's always, it, it, it is a higher power, whatever you want to call it. You know, I mean, wherever you, whatever your faith may be, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to go to the same church as me, but you do. Um, I always believe when you have a talent that God gives you a talent. And when that opportunity happened at that particular time, at that wake, and that woman asked me that, it's almost like God said, because I didn't know if I was ever going to be in radio again, because radio, the business had changed so much, I didn't really care about it anymore. I really was, I ended up in television 17 years at Channel 8, because radio jobs were gone. So to be able, I, I had left Channel 8, and to be able to all of a sudden come back to radio was, was just, was really something. But it's also... God says, here's a microphone. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Who are you going to talk about? So when you can take a microphone and share it with a guy that's 100 years old and was at Iwo Jima and Okinawa, yeah, yeah. and he's a World War II hero, and let him talk, that is powerful. Oh, absolutely. You know, you know. So I say, this would be cool. If I sat down with this guy for a few minutes, would I find him interesting? Yeah. So that's why I do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you're good at it, without a doubt. And uh, I'm, I am a fan of your station to begin with. Oh I, boy! You know, I you mean, even when it's not my show, no, even not. You oh know. God! One of those guys. <laughs> you know, I listen to Pastor Will. Oh and, my God! Who was a character oh, and yeah. a half? Oh right yeah. There, and uh, but I will say, Saturday mornings, it's always a pleasure to put you on. And that I'll tell you. You know, it like soothes your mind. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, well, it's it is a break from that, and I don't do I don't have politicians on with me. Um, I don't get into honestly. I don't take phone calls, and people say, "Oh, do you take phone calls?" More often than not, people will never call, because I think I remember years ago hearing something like, 10 percent of your audience will think about calling, a lot less than that always will actually call," and if you listen to it long enough, there's always the habitual callers. Yeah. Always yeah. the same people. They want to hear their own voice. They want to get up on their soapbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if it's a subject that, um, if something happened, like, you know, if a, if a big uh, I don't know, disaster happened, God forbid, like, I think I, when I first started, it was when the Boston uh, bombing had just happened. And something like that, people want to talk. Yeah. And it's not just the same people. People need to, yeah, you know. They need, they need to vent. Yeah. You know, out their frustrations and yep. and their thoughts. Yep. And, and you're right. It's it's a, it's a gift too. When you have to when you have to be able to let them talk. But see, other times, um, I always remember Johnny Carson, and I always thought he was a great interviewer because he always let the guests speak. He it wasn't just Johnny Carson and the guest. It was the guest, and Johnny Carson enjoyed it like the rest of us. Yeah. And if I kept talking to an interesting guest and the phone kept ringing and somebody said, oh, you know, I really like the fourth movie you did back yeah, in, yeah. I don't care about, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I really want to, if, if I have an engaging guest, if somebody who is great to listen to, it's not the kind of show where I go looking for phone calls. Yes, and sometimes it's better to do something off the cuff oh, yeah. and, and not overthink it. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, how many times could you sit back and say, well, we'll have him and then study for days and oh, days. Oh, no. <laughs> and, and in reality, that's not going to work. No, no. 
In fact, the people used to go crazy with Larry King because he never did that. Larry was always as totally unprepared as, as I am. Yeah. You yeah. know, you know enough about the person, you know enough about the subject, but it should be a discussion. I always tell people, if I met you for five minutes and we talked by the chips and dip, and you told me what you did, if we were at a party and you were just telling me, would I like you enough, find you interesting enough to find out more about what you're doing? Yeah. It's always about who I'm talking to on the phone. And if they have a smile and they bring their personality and they know how to smile and they know how to laugh, it can even be a very serious subject. But I'll stay because I like the person who's telling me about it. Yeah. You know, and if you have people that just get on there and they just want to, you know, start talking about, well, you know, on this Saturday we're going to have a, uh, a big fundraiser. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, make it human. Yeah. You know, if you're doing a big fundraiser to benefit cystic fibrosis no. or something, and, why are you doing it? And you have to remember too, Steve, there's times when you have to talk about something that are very near and dear to you. Oh, yeah. Like this past week when you had to say something about Bill Haynes. Oh. That Dr. Bill, yep. I mean, he was such a special person. Mm. And how do you come across the people to let them know that, you know, he is not your average person, you know? Well, you tough. know, that was, um, I knew Dr. Haynes, and people all over Connecticut knew Dr. Haynes. I mean, the Hartford Veterinary Hospital had been around forever. Yeah. Um, this guy operated on a gorilla from Ringling Brothers Circus. Um, I remember Dr. Lowe, who's a world-famous heart surgeon who did the first successful heart transplant um, in Connecticut, actually had a, there was a dog. Dr. Bill was working on a dog, and the dog was having heart problems. He got a hold of Dr. Lowe. Dr. Lowe came to Hartford Veterinary Hospital, took care of the dog, and ended up, uh, Dr. Lowe ended up taking the dog. <laughs> See? But, but it was, I knew enough about Dr. Bill because I'd known him since I was a kid. But... I knew enough people knew about him where I had to at least say something. Yeah. And a lot of times at the, uh, at the show, I will mention something like that. And he was just, uh, Larry, he came down to something that I wanted to talk about. Well, she, and, I want, and, and you know something? When I wanted to mention that, I knew it would mean a lot to me. And I knew family and friends that would mean something to them. Sure, sure. And I also... Um, People ask me how many people listen to the show all the time. How many listeners do you have? And I'll say, generally I'll say there's 11, but I think they're really nice people. And I really appreciate that. Two guys are farmers up in Enfield. Yeah. You know, one guy's playing setback in Windsor. <laughs> but if you start, start to think about, is this something that a lot of people will want to know about? If you start to think about how big of an audience can you get? That's your downfall because then all of a sudden it's a business yeah. and you just got to, you got to go with your gut. And my dad used to say when he ran WDRC, he would always say, don't worry about how many people are listening. That's my job because he's the program yeah, director. Yeah. I have to be concerned yeah. about that. But you as the talent, if somebody tuned into the radio station tomorrow and I was gone, would anybody ever know that I was there? And that's the way you have to look Absolutely. at it. You Absolutely. Know? I mean... You know, you take events like, uh, you know, when the Children's Hospital had their event every year with the Ferraris. Oh, and, God, yeah. I mean, how special is that? Huge. You know, I mean, you, and you always, Steve, are always there to mention something that's important. You know, it means a lot to a lot of people, me especially. Because well, I always know you're keeping an eye. I got to be ready. Larry, Larry's always out there. He'll get me after the show with a text. <laughs> I'll either get the eyeballs looking at me yeah. and it says "good show" or "what yeah. are you talking about?" Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and it's funny. Sometimes people that know me will send me messages while I'm on the air. Like they'll send me a text or something, and I'm going, "You don't understand." When Steve Parker's on the radio. I can't be the Steve Parker that's worried about a text coming in. No. Hey, you coming over for lunch today, Steve? <laughs> you know. But I did have a guy um, one time, and I saw it. I just happened to see a message come up. And it was a guy who heard me have a subject that you're not going to love all of the subjects. And whatever I did, he didn't like it. He felt it was too... See, I not left or right. I, I'm like, I yeah. try to do both sides. But this was very far to the left. And I thought it really needed to be discussed. So he sent me a text and it said something to the effect of, 
keep it in the middle. Keep it in the middle. He goes, and then he goes, keep it in the middle. Yeah. He goes, your job is to do the most, to do the best, to get the most amount of listeners for your investors. Oh, and I wanted to dear. go, really? <laughs> really? You think I'm worried about the investors? Oh, my dear. I mean, I respect the advertisers, yeah. but if I have to start designing my yeah. show and worried about, you know, what people are going to, yeah. I can't I mean, worry about that. There's, there's people that worry about uh, the political politics. Oh, there's enough of them out, out there now. Let me tell you. Well, there's, there's also people when I first started at the radio station all those years ago, they sent me an email and wonderful email. It's from somebody who said, Steve Parker, what a breath of fresh air. Boy, he's terrific. Thank you so much. Blah, blah, blah. Then the next day they sent me an email. He's an idiot. He's got no idea. <laughs> Obviously, you're not paying him any money, and he's never been on radio before in his life. <laughs> and they said, Steve, we have to share the good yeah, and the bad. Yeah. But if you go out to dinner tonight and you go to a restaurant, like a Ruth's Chris restaurant, and you have a wonderful filet mignon, yeah, it's terrific. But if there's one piece of gristle in there, if there's one piece of fat, you're going to call him up. You're going to write a letter. You're going to put it on Facebook. But when something's a really good experience, you don't usually hear from the people that are happy. No, no, no. And if you start worrying about, like, if somebody really gets mad, I can't worry about it. Because for all I know, that one person didn't like it, but if the other people are okay, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it's, it. Yeah, some people, they just have a habit and they have to correct or they think they're correcting you. Oh, believe me, Delia, I get enough things wrong. And my producer, Carolyn, she's wonderful. She, she used to be the general manager of the uh, Central Connecticut State University radio station. And she knows if I get something wrong, no matter what, it could be 5.30 in the morning. And if I get a fact wrong, those phones are blowing up. Yeah, yeah. He's an idiot. You know, I don't know. He doesn't know. I can't remember the name of a see, band. See, or the, or the good thing about that, then you know someone's listening. Oh, yeah, well, that's it. <laughs> All you have to do is make a mistake, and they're there to tell you about it. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Do that. And, and that's the other thing, too. I mean, people don't have to have an informed opinion. See, when you listen to talk radio during the week, and they're discussing what's happening at the, uh, at the Capitol or, you know, the presidential stuff, whatever, you're afraid to call in because you're afraid that the host is going to put you in your place because he's going to know more about it than, than you. Yeah. So you don't feel like you're 100% sure about everything. But if, if I said on the radio tomorrow, who do you really think shot John F. Kennedy? My phones will light up. Oh, sure. Because yeah. you don't have to have an informed opinion. That's yeah. the difference, too. Because yeah. uh, then it's safe. Like when we do the stuff with Telescope View, you know? Everybody has feelings about whether or not there's UFOs. Oh, yeah. I, I, I could not believe, Steve... When we did that show about Bob Lazar, I mean, the, the views from doing that show, the people that were, were so interested and wanted to say something, you know, and the emails and, oh, my dear, you never know, you know. Well, yeah, but, but you knew um, I have a lot of times I'll have your partner. I'll still have him on the radio with me. Oh, and yeah. I'll call Rick out of the blue. And I'll just say, and he knows Friday night, I'll call him at nine o'clock and I'll just say, and sometimes there's nothing going on. I'll say, is there anything happening in the UFO world or UAFs or UAPs or whatever they are? I don't care if there is or not. He'll find, he'll yeah. find yeah. something to talk about. Well, you about. know, Steve, blah, blah, blah. And then he'll talk <laughs> and then I'll have him on at 6.15. A lot of times when I do something like that, I do it at 6.15 because overnight we have a show called Coast to Coast. Yes. And they always talk about Sasquatch and flying name? saucers. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, so I know that if I do that close enough, one guy called up with something really weird one time, and I went, now you're quarter to six. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Usually yeah. the first one's quarter after six. Yeah, I got to what, listen to a couple of those shows at night. Oh, my dear. Oh, isn't that amazing? Oh, my God. Oh, my dear. Talk about some interesting subjects. Oh, boy, oh, boy. But you know what it is, too, Larry? People, people like personality. And I think when we were talking in the last show we did about growing up with all these DJs, there's a lot of, um, you still care about who the, who the personality is. And I think the reason talk radio became popular, and Rush Limbaugh, let's face it, man, he brought yeah. the whole thing around. He really saved AM radio. Steve, I miss him so much. He, but you know something? I, I mean, people hated him. <laughs> 
And people loved them. And they loved to hate them. <laughs> people that hated them would still listen every I day. Mean, I, I, I could not. My wife used to go crazy. The you golden listen, EIB you microphone. Listen to him again? Talent on loan from God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but what a gift the really, man had. But it really was true. His talent was on loan from God. That's what yeah, we say. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, oh, boy. And you know something? I had more people. When he died, I put up on my Facebook page, I said, he was one of the best. God bless you, Rush. I had all oh, my liberal friends. Yeah. Oh, Steve, we're so disappointed. Yeah, I'm yeah. All I'm saying. What are you supposed to say? Something bad about yeah, the guy? Not only that, <laughs> I'm in the business. He was a great broadcaster. Oh, he great, was. Because you know something? He got the joke. He had more fun than anybody else. He did. So he when did. he got people riled up, he was having a blast, you know? Yeah, talk about a controversial person. Oh, my dear. <laughs> I love to listen to him, though. Oh boy! Yeah, I'm surprised that um, that even uh, you know that they. I I I think they should just run him, you know, repeats, run him in syndication, because yeah. I think people, if all of a sudden tomorrow you put Rush back on at this time slot again, they'd be there. Oh, sure they yeah, would. Yeah. They'd be there. But and the other guy too, Steve Harvey what was the. Oh, Paul. Uh, uh, Paul. Uh, Paul Harvey. Paul Harvey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the end of the story. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's the end of the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, he was I always, used to love the rest And now the rest of the story. Yeah. Yeah. He always had great stuff. I got to meet him one time. That was really yeah. interesting really neat. guy, wasn't he? Oh, tremendous. But you know, it's it's still like it's we miss when we were kids, we listened to DJs and we listened to music. We listened to the music, but we loved the DJs too. We found their personalities interesting. And talk radio brings back personality. And a lot of the guys that are, that are good with talk radio could be great if you gave them eight records an hour, if they didn't talk the whole time. Yeah, yeah. If they yeah. just spoke a little bit, you'd get more out of it. Well, that's why I was complaining about these football games. I literally turn off the announcers. I mean, ba 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 They don't stop. They don't stop. <laughs> I say to myself, you're not the referee. Oh, yeah, right, 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 right. Oh, my dear. Yeah. Well, I know sometimes, you know, somebody will get crazy with me because I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be telling a story. Of, I don't want to hear about that. <laughs> I can't worry about it. You know, no, I can't, no. you know, and you, you just uh, you just have to keep moving forward and believe in what you do. Yeah, you know, yeah. and I'm really uh, I I'd still even now. You have to treat every show you do as if it is your last one. That's right. When I was on WPOP all those years ago. Back in the mid-1990s, that show, we actually thought, first of all, when they said I could do a show, I figured they were already done anyways. It's got to be, they'll be closed in a couple days if they let Parker do a show. But we treated every show like it could be our last show. That's how you got to look at it, really. If all of a sudden they come in tomorrow. But I'll tell you, I, they gave me a heads up when, the show, when I was going to have my last show. And they called me. And they went into the office and said, Steve, want to let you know that the radio station, WPOP, is going to be turned to syndicated sports, and Friday will be your last show. Yeah. I said, okay. So we were videotaping some of the shows. So we videotaped Thursday's show. And after the show was over, I looked up at the video, up at the camera, and I said, very likely you just saw the last Steve Parker and company on WPOP. So after the show... Management calls me into the st back into their office. Oh, Steve, the Hartford Current got a hold of this story, so you're not going to get to do your last show. Well, I was smart enough on I was smart enough on Thursday at the end of that show before I signed off. I thanked everybody. I thanked yeah. the listeners. I thanked every I thanked everybody I could come up with, and then I said, "I oh, will see you tomorrow for another fun-filled Friday." So when they told me I wasn't going to get to do Friday, I just smiled. I walked out and I said. I'm the son of a program director. <laughs> Do you think I thought you were going to give me my last show on Friday? <laughs> I knew as soon as they said that Thursday would be the last one. Yeah. But if you treat it like that, and you do it like we do a lot of stuff with yeah. homeless. When we, were, when we did our Christmas show back in the 90s, we did homeless for the holidays. So we went to a homeless shelter, and we did the show from there. Well, it was a way to tell people that there's a lot of people that aren't that fortunate. Yeah, yeah. But... It was also a way to kind of remind people that, you know, there's another world out there. But selfishly, 
we had to work on Christmas. We wanted an audience. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know what? Steve, you just, you do a lot of great things, Dad, I'll tell you. I even see you on commercials again. Oh, the Betty, Betty and Barn. You got that Barn, you got that Barn. I got see that you in, oh, you're dressed up in a beautiful <laughs> red, red <laughs> coat. Acting normal. I said, oh, oh, I was wearing the normal thing again. Uh oh. I said, I said, what's going on with this? Well, you know, it's funny. Ellen DeGeneres picked one of our commercials as the worst jingle in the country. I remember. And somebody told me about it. And I thought, oh, we have commercials on there. They said, oh, no, 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 you're on there. And I said, wow, this is great. And I looked up, I did like a Google search of how many people watch your show. 4.3 million people. Yeah, yeah. I said, so now 4.3 million people know that I'm the worst. <laughs> hey, at least they know you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it is, it is funny because it's one of those things where the betting barn stuff, I started back with them in the 1980s. You know, I've been doing it for, there was only one yeah. guy before me. And um, always had fun. Yeah, and you know, that's what it's about, really. You want people at home, whether it's radio or, or like when we're doing this, you don't know how bad somebody's life could be. Yeah. You don't know, maybe they're having, maybe they're sick, maybe they lost somebody in their family, whatever. So whatever you're doing there, a stupid commercial, jumping up and down, hopefully somebody smiles. If they smile, yep. you've done your job. That's it. That's the only way you can look well, at it. Well, Steve, as usual. We smiled and I've done my job. Good night. Time, <laughs> you know, time flies when you're having fun. And I, I'll tell you, I cannot wait to get you back on here. Of course, I want to do it with our buddy Rick. Yeah. And we'll start talking about UFOs oh, again. Yeah. Yep. And you've been excellent tonight. And we, you know that we'll be listening Saturday morning. And I can't thank you enough, buddy. Well, no. Larry, a lot, not a lot of people give you the credit for what you do because you are so committed to doing programs. I mean, you're, you're on this station all the time. Yeah. And let's face it, your knowledge for cars, but like you were saying to me, you know how to talk to the people that we're going to find interesting to talk to. You bring that out of them. It's yeah, not just about the car. That's right. That's what you got to do. You got a gift. I find once I started doing things beyond the automotive industry, that it's very interesting. And there's no reason in the world when you have a talk show, you can't do different things. And you taught me that. That I'll tell you. And I want to thank you and... I want you to hug Angela for me and Zoe, too. Group hug. Group hug. Hug it up. Hug it up. And, you gave Carol a hug for me. And uh, we'll have to get together for coffee one morning. Oh, yeah. The coffee shop down the street. Okay. All right. You heard it first here on Race in Action today. And tune in next week to our next episode. Hopefully, we'll have another guest like Mr. Parker. And I want to thank you and good night. This program is brought to you in part by Just Results Weight Loss Center in Berlin, Connecticut.